Let's pray, and then we'll get started. There's handouts, so make sure you get one of those. Okay, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for today. I thank you for everyone that is here, and I just, closer to you, God, and I just pray that we will get a better understanding of what it is to hear your voice and experience your presence. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so just so you all know, at any point in time, if you have a question, feel free to raise your hand. Um, I gave you the handouts. If you want to take notes, um, there's pens and pencils. We're going to do a little activity um, at the end. Make sure it works and make sure you might need a hard service to write under on top of that if you're going to. But we are going to do an activity writing. So make sure your writing utensil works. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to raise your hand and we'll talk about it. There'll be some interactive stuff. Um, so yeah, okay, so let me just ask you guys this. What do you guys think it means when you hear, like, what does it mean to hear God? Or, or what do you think of when someone says, oh, I heard God speak? What do you think of? Any answer? Hearing his voice, what else? Is it an audible voice? It could be, in your thoughts? An inner voice, anything else, anything else? Write the right song, maybe a song, like can God's voice come through a song? A prophetic word, yes, very good. Oh, front row, yeah, you guys can sit in the front. I know, I'm so happy to see you guys. Say hi to Colton, everybody. Uh, yes. And get extra pens and pencils, please. Okay, all right. So basically, the focus of this class is going to be ministry focused. So it's not only going to be about hearing God for yourself, but hearing God for others. For me, and even to this day, I have an easier time hearing God if I'm praying over someone else than I do when I'm asking him my own questions. So it's, it's a lot easier. I don't know why it just is. But I think it's that principle of putting others first and being unselfish, you know? And so... Yeah, and so I gave, the reason why I gave you guys these, these handouts, if you don't have one, we'll make sure you get one, but the handouts, um, it, it has a lot of the information that you already need, so I might be flying through stuff, so if you feel like I'm going fast, it's probably on the handout, So just so you guys have a heads up, and my objectives for this class is I want everybody to have an idea of how God communicates to you, because what I've noticed in working with so many people and training and teaching them how to hear God and in my own experience, people hear God in different ways. And if I teach you my way to hear God, it might not work for you because you're different. Does that make sense? And, and it's funny how like different people experience different things. Um, and then I also want everybody by the end of this class, by the end of the month, to have confidence in being obedient when God speaks to you. Because God is going to start telling you stuff. I'm telling you, this is like prime time. When you first start learning how to hear God speak, God is, makes it so obvious. And he's so gentle. And he like starts telling you to do stuff. And he's like, who's going to be obedient? And I really believe that everybody that comes out of this class is going to have confidence in being obedient and doing what God says. Amen. Okay, so without looking at your handout, don't look at it yet. What is prophecy? Or what do you, yeah. What, what is prophecy? Like if you had to like define it. Words spoken yet to come to pass. Eschatology. Eschatology. Oh, that's a good idea. Like revelation. People think of eschatology is like the book of revelation end time stuff that's interesting anyone else want to have a guess of what what is prophecy what is that word we hear that we hear people say prophesy or oh there's a prophetic word what is what is that you know words right so okay so basically what right right? The Holy Spirit brought it forth. So basically, when you hear prophecy, for today's teaching especially, and just when you hear it, you should think of really basic. Hearing God and releasing his heart. That's on your paper. Hearing God and releasing his heart. So anytime someone says, oh, there's a prophecy, it should be that person heard God, and whatever's about to come out of their mouth from hearing God is releasing God's heart. 
Does that make sense? That's like basic bullet point definition. I like this longer definition. It came from Sean Boltz. Sean Boltz is amazing. He's probably teaching, the, he's the leading teacher of, in the world of uh, hearing, how to, hearing God's voice. And he has got a crazy gift of word of knowledge. Like he'll get up there, call out your address, call out your email, your phone number, and the past five jobs you had. And, and then he'll tell you your next job that you're going to have. Like it's, it's um, I saw him in person and it's amazing. But if you want to look up someone just to do some like extra homework or growing more, Sean Boltz is an excellent resource. Um, if you want me to clarify that afterwards, I can do that. Um, so his definition that I really liked is prophecy, a longer definition. Prophecy is a divine spoken word that comes to us by revelation. God's plans and heart are revealed for a person, place, or situation. So prophecy doesn't have to necessarily, like, how many people knew that businesses can get prophecies? There are, there are prophets that are called to the business place. And I actually got to experience giving one of those one time. I was in Thailand, and we were praying over someone's business, and, like, he had nothing. And I, like, had an inner vision, and we're going to talk about what that is. I had an inner vision, and I just saw, like, whatever building he was in, I just saw it expanding and growing. And I said that. I said, God is going to take, you're going to have a business that expands, and it's going to be large, and it's going to be way bigger than you ever planned. And you want to know something? The Thai people, they're Presbyterian. They said, the woman came up to me. She said, I think you just made that up to say that to make them feel good. Uh, she said that to me. So just so you know, as you step out in this and go out in the world, sometimes people will be jealous that like God is speaking to you. They'll be jealous that you're doing more than them because you're just being obedient. And some people will try and come against you because that happened to me. Like she was coming against me and she was the pastor's wife. You know what I mean? And so, they're, the, they're the worst. Ah, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. And so basically, basically, you know what happened? Three months later, that guy was having the grand opening of his big shop, and it was a huge building, and it had all this stuff in it, and he had this big party. And that pastor's wife came up to me. She said, you were right. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I don't lie. If I feel like God said, told me to say it, I'm, go I'm, go I'm not lying, you know? And the thing is, though, I can't take credit for it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just relaying a message. And hearing God's voice, you become a vessel. It's not about you. It's not about what you think. It's not about what you feel. Does your mailman, does he care? Does he go through your mail? Does he, sometimes you don't even know what it means. Sometimes I say stuff to people, I'm like, I don't know what they're going through. And they're like, how did you know? How did you know I'm going through this? And I thought, well, I didn't know. I didn't even know that, that those words connected to your situation. You know what I mean? And it's like, you got to think like, I'm a mailman and I'm just delivering a message to a person, right? Okay. So there's two, uh, like dimensions or two parts to prophecy. They're on your paper. What are they? Foretelling and foretelling. So foretelling, both of these can still happen today. Foretelling was very much dominant in the Old Testament. Everything in the Old Testament was pointing towards Jesus, like Jesus is coming, all this stuff happening in the future. Today, now that we are on the other side of Jesus, New Testament, you know, sometimes you'll hear New Testament prophecy, that term, that's more of the foretelling. Now, we can still have instances of foretelling. This definition also came out of Sean Boltz's book. Foretelling is the prediction or forecasting of present and future events. When I hear that, I think of, like, the, the people today that are like, oh, an earthquake's going to come or a hurricane's going to come. That, I would challenge that that's, like, not from God at all. Like, if you think about it, what's the message behind that? Oh, the world is sinful and bad, and God's going to punish everybody. Like, I don't know about you, but the God I serve doesn't do that to me. He doesn't make a, a tornado come on my house if I sin. You know what I mean? And so it's like, when you think of foretelling, it would be more like, like someone giving me a word, uh, you know, God's going to send you to different countries. You know what I mean? That's foretelling. That's saying, like, this is happening, right? God's going to do this in the future. Now, foretelling, what do you think of when you think of foretelling? Right, right, you can look, I'll let you cheat. So, forth telling is speaking for God. It's like speaking on his behalf and declaring his truth. 
Um, some of the other parts that will go in this, it's not in your handouts. If you want to write it down, or if it'll help you think of like other words for foretelling, it involves insight into God's will. So it's kind of answering the question of God's doing. I know that happens a lot when I'm praying for people. I feel like I'm declaring God is doing this in your life. God is doing this right now or God's about to do something. That's like insight into his will. Sharing his inspired will for the now. Foretelling is like, right, right, what's going on now. Um, I like this uh, one, Chris Valentin, he's with Bethel. He like teaches on like the prophetic there. He's an amazing prophet. Um, he says that it's like co-creating, a co-creating partnership with God. And, the, and he gave a story where he gave a, wor a word to this woman who had apparently like not a lot of musical ability or couldn't even sing. And he said to her, you're a worship leader. She's like, you got it wrong. No, I'm not. And he's like, listen, that's not how it works. He goes, if God is saying, he, and he knows his stuff, he's like, if God is saying, you're a worship leader, or you're going to be a worship leader, God is about to equip you with all the abilities to do those things. And so he was saying, it's like co-creating. He is partnering with God, and maybe what sh she's in a state where she cannot do something, but now, because that word was released, he spoke it, and now it is able to happen. And that's what I believe, like, what happens with, like, psychics. Like, I think, like, psychics are, like, they're like bad prophets. They're not, they don't see into the future. They are declaring something bad. They're declaring a curse so that it's able to happen. You know what I mean? Versus a, prof, a prophetic word or a prophecy that would be declaring a blessing for something good to happen in their life, right? And sure enough, that woman two years later came back and said, I'm a worship leader now, you know? And that's another thing we're going to talk about later on. But it's really important to follow up. If you give a word to somebody, it's important to follow up and see, like, you know, because you need to know if you're, if you're missing the mark, if you're hitting it, you know what I mean? Um, forth telling also is encouraging. It's exhortative, getting people back on the path to God. And it also sometimes will challenge believers to obey, Right? It'll challenge them to, like, do more. It'll challenge them to, uh, to seek God more and to step out into something. So forthtelling is, is, like, I think the best thing. And then on top of it, forthtelling, like, if you're foretelling something, you have a greater chance of being wrong. You know what I mean? If you're like, this is going to happen in five years. I really am not, like, a dates and times person. When someone says that, I'm like... It brings confusion. One time someone gave a prophetic word over my sister, and they're like, oh, your sister's going to get saved this year. And I was like, well, it, that didn't happen. So does that mean he was wrong? You know what I mean? Like, uh, did something not happen? Did I do something wrong? And now that kind of left me with a lot of questions. You know, if he had just said, you know what, there's going to be a day where your sister is going to be in the kingdom of God and going to be saved walking with the Lord. You know what I mean? Like, that gave me so much more comfort and peace, and I can, like, partner with that, you know? But, yeah. So that's just little stuff like this that we're going to learn and grow with together. Okay, question, yes or no? Can we all hear God's voice? Yeah. Yes? Okay, good. I'll just read one scripture then. If someone said no, I was going to read two. I'll just read one. Um, so... And, and you can look all these verses up. Like if someone asks you, that's why I gave you guys these verses. If someone asks you, well, how do you know you can hear God's voice? Go to the Bible. It says in, in John, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Are we his sheep? Yes. And in Revelation at the last one, it says like, oh, my, I, he who has ears to hear what the Spirit says for the churches. You know, okay, question now, can we all prophesy? No. Ooh, let's talk about Raise that. Your hand. Let's talk Oh, that's really good. We're going to talk about that in this in one of these sessions. Um, so basically, think about this. Oh, yes. We and, and you know what? It's okay. Well, it's okay. We are, that's how you learn and grow. And that's going to happen, guys. That's a part of this pro about this process. You are not going to be always right, and you are going to make mistakes hearing God's voice. You know why? It's like learning a new language. How about I teach you all Chinese? Are you guys going to sound like eloquent Chinese speakers? I should have said Thai because I know a little bit of Thai. Right? Are you going to sound like eloquent Thai speakers? 
No, you're going to sound childlike. You're going to sound ridiculous. You're going to sound stupid. Well, you know what? You're about to do that in your spiritual lives with God because you're, you're, it's like learning a new language. Does that make sense? And you have to be what? Humble. You have to be willing to make mistakes and learn from them. If you come in all hot and prideful, right? You're not going to get it. Not, no, no, you're not. That's what I'm saying. He's not that. He was super humble, right? If you come in all hot and prideful, you're going to miss it. You're not going to learn. You're not going to grow. And you know what? The, what I've met is prideful people often have a hard time hearing God's voice when it comes time to doing it. But basically what this verse is saying, especially that you may prophesy, why would God tell us to desire something that we can't do? Right? Right? Later in that chapter, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 31, says, uh, right here it says, For you can all prophesy one by one, so that all may learn and all be encouraged. I want to drop my phone and be like, that's the, it. You know what I mean? But I don't want it to break. You know what I'm saying? So let me ask the question again. Can we all prophesy? Yes. Yes. And you should think of hearing God's voice and prophesying is synonymous. You know what I mean? You should think like those are like basically the same thing. Like you can't prophesy without hearing God's voice. You get what I'm saying? Okay. So one thing I want to uh, just urge you guys to is don't look for the audible voice of God because the Holy Spirit is inside of you. Not that it can't happen. I have friends that they said they've heard the audible voice of God. I have not. But you know what? I think it's better and it shows more because I'm listening and seeking God for the small still voice while the other person was not listening and God had to like audibly like call him out be like get your life together you know what I mean so it's better to seek the small still voice of God okay there are four primary ways of hearing God we're gonna we're gonna fly through this okay in your thoughts and words You can pray, you can close your eyes and say, God, speak to me. And like, it's going to sound like your own thoughts, right? Right? You might get a word. I remember the first word I did when I did the exercise, the word lightning came through my head. Now, I didn't see a picture of lightning. I didn't see nothing. Just lightning. And I was like, all right, I'm going to say lightning. And sure enough, the guy was like, does that mean anything to you? And he was like, yeah, it actually does. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm like, maybe I'm getting this. Okay, you can get pictures or visions. These ones are a little bit fun. They're kind of cool. Like you could see a picture or something. Like you'll get an image. Your imagination, which is a part of your spirit, is engaged, right? So we got words and thoughts. This is all in your handout. If you don't have a handout, let us know. We'll make sure you get one. Pictures and visions um, or like inner visions. Um, And also with the pictures, sometimes like you could see a picture and there'll be a red balloon or something like that, right? And you're like... I don't know what that means. Sometimes you can say the picture to somebody uh, and that means something to them. Sometimes I'll say, does a red balloon mean anything to you? They'll say no. And then I'm like, all right, I got to ask Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what does the red balloon mean? And he'll tell you. You know, it, it, it's a part, it's like a dream, right? It's like dream and like getting that interpretation. It's all symbolism and it all continually makes you seek God. Are we tracking? We got, we got a good understanding with the two. Number three, impressions and feelings. This is like a weird one because it's like something inside of you. There's in your gut of, uh, I don't know why, because it's not a word. It's not a picture. It's just this like, I just inner knowing. It's like, I just know. I can feel it in my bones, but I don't know what it is. That one's a little weird. For me, I get impressions when I'm supposed to go to people. If I'm supposed to be like, I just got to talk to them. I don't have a word. I don't know what I'm going to say. I just know I need to go there. Sure enough, I believe God does that. And he's, gonna, he's testing your obedience. He'll give you that gut feeling. And then when he sees that you're obedient and you go, he's going to give you the word. You know what I mean? Sometimes you might get a word or a picture. And sometimes that picture that I see, it starts moving and it turns into a video in my head. But God was like, I'm just showing you. He's like, are you going to click on that video? And like, are you going to actually go and be obedient? And then once I do it, like it starts playing. And then I'm like getting all this stuff. And I'm like, whoa. And that's like super biblical and how like the prophets operated. Now, just so you know, we'll talk about this later. But just because you prophesy and get a prophetic word doesn't make you a prophet. Because we all can prophesy and prophets have different jobs and things and offices in the church. We can talk about that later. But just, I remember the first time I got a prophetic word and I was like, I'm basically a prophet now, you know? So 
yeah, don't make the same mistakes as me. Okay, the fourth one. The fourth one is the most important one, the Bible. God speaks through the Bible. If you want to hear God's voice more, you read the Bible. You can release, you can go and pray over somebody, and you can get a scripture for them. I feel like God is saying over you, John three sixteen, that he loves you. You know what I mean? And that you're saved. It's something super simple like that. You could get a Bible character. I got a prophetic word one time. Someone's like, you're like Daniel. God is calling you by the name of Daniel right now. And they were saying, like, you're going to be interpreting dreams. You're going to be doing this. You're going to, you know what I mean? And so, like, that was connected. And even, like, biblical symbolism, you could get a picture in your mind of, yes, God is saying to you, Colton, remember his promises. Because remember, it's not the way she said. She said, remember... uh, my promise or or something like that. And it's not about me. It's about, it's all about him, you know? And so it's like, okay, promises, right? So does that make sense? So there's different ways we use the Bible. And the Bible is the most important one because we judge every other word. Like if I got the red balloon thing, you're like, where's that in the Bible? You know what I mean? So it's like, if you got to make that mean something that is going to be something biblically related for their life, you know what I mean? But God can... One time I saw a donkey for somebody. You know what I mean? But that is in the Bible. But you know what I mean? It's like God is going to challenge you with some crazy, crazy stuff. Okay. In 1 Kings 19.12, it describes God's voice as the small, still voice. When we start this process and grow together, you're going to think it's yourself. You're going to think that's that's just me. It's not God. No, it's going to sound just like you because... Your spirit's on the inside of you, and then it's got to go through your soul, which is your mind, your emotions, all that stuff. It's got to get through it to come out of your mouth. You get what I'm saying? So take the leap and take the risk, and especially in the beginning. If you tell somebody, "Uh, you know what, I'm just growing in hearing God's voice, and I would come up to people, and I would ask them, I'd say, hey, can I practice in hearing God's voice for you? And if you say that, people are like, sure. So do that with each other. Do that with other people in the church. You know what I mean? Like, ask them, can I practice hearing God's voice? And what's the worst that could happen? They get blessed. You know what I mean? Because if you let them know that you're, gonna, that you're practicing, if you get it wrong or if you make a mistake, they're not going to go, you know, sell everything they own and move to Africa. Or I should have said to China because I don't know if God's telling anybody to go to China with this coronavirus. But he might be. I'm not God. Um, but you get what I'm saying? Okay. So how do I know it's from God? First Corinthians 14 verse four. I call it the calling out gold test. It's on your handout in first Corinthians 14 verse four. This is what it says. It gives us the definition of prophecy. It says the one, what? That's not the right one. I think it's verse three. I think I wrote, I wrote the wrong one. You can change on your thing. It's actually verse three. Um, it says, on the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their upbuilding and encouragement and comfort. So that's basically it is, what it is. If you've got a word for somebody, you should be calling out the gold. I shouldn't be calling out their dirt. I shouldn't be like, you've got this sin in your life. God doesn't love you. You know what I mean? It is about calling out gold. And they should feel comforted. They should feel encouraged. And they should feel like they are built up. Does that make sense? So if, does that mean I could pray over somebody? I said, you know what? God loves you. Is that a prophetic word? Yes. Yes. Does that comfort them? Okay. That could be prophetic. If I said, God's going to bless you this week. Is that prophetic? Right? It is prophetic because that could build somebody up, you know? And the thing is, is we, in, in this, you have to We have to have a safe space practice. I don't remember if I put that on your hand or not. But basically, don't be afraid to make a mistake while you're practicing because it's going to happen. And you know what? There's two things that you can do about that. You can ask somebody. I'll pray somebody. And I'll be like, I feel like God is saying this. Use your language. I feel. I'm not saying, thus saith the Lord. Right? I feel. Meaning like, this is what I'm thinking. What do you think? And I ask them afterwards, does that resonate with you? Does, that, does what I said, does that mean anything to you? And they'll be like, oh, yeah, it does. Or, you know, sometimes there are people like, no, or whatever. And it's okay. Get the feedback. It's really important. I know one woman, she goes around, she stands up in the front, and she, like, calls somebody out, and she goes, all right, how accurate was this? 
On a scale of 1 to 10, how accurate? And she said some people give her ones in front of the whole church, right? But you know what? She's learning and growing. And she's getting a lot more tens now. You know what I mean? That's Marilyn Hickey's daughter. Um, so if you want to hear God speak more, I'm going to fly through this. Read your Bible. Practice and ask other people. Get that feedback. Write down the things that you feel like God is saying so you can keep track of that. And get in God's presence more. Put on some music and worship. Because that's where his, I feel like I hear God the clearest is in his presence. And you watch after today in worship. Be talking with God. Ask God, what am I supposed to say? Is there something I'm supposed to do? And like there, we have an atmosphere where we hear that. You know what I mean? And so what I want us to do, I want us to do a quick, quick, quick activity. Um, and, but I want to explain listening prayer and your assignment before we do the activity. Listening prayer is taking all these concepts and applying it to prayer. When you have your one-on-one -on -one time in your prayer time, whether you drive in the car or sit alone somewhere in your house, you just ask God, what do you want me to pray for? And he'll give you a thought. He'll give you a word. He'll give you a picture of a person. Maybe he'll give you this gut feeling of, I need to pray for this country, right? That's listening prayer, asking God. And so your assignment is at least three times for a minimum of 10 minutes, sit in God's presence, put on some music. If you want some instrumental music, I'll get you with it. You know what I mean? And really just listen and seek what God has. Um, and just ask him. And so do it at least three times. We're going to talk about it. Okay, can you guys pass around these index cards and make sure you have your pen and stuff like that? Um, what we're going to do really quick. Okay, I need a volunteer. Who wants to get blessed? Who wants to get blessed? All right. How about you? How about we're going to we're going to bless Corinne. Um, so basically, we're all going to get index cards. We're going to pray, and we're going to write down on a piece of paper what God is going to say to Corinne. Can you open this for me? I can't open it. We're going to, um, it doesn't have to be long, and we're just going to pray real quick and just write on the piece of paper, and then we're going to give her all these papers, and she can take it home. What do you want to say to Corinne? And you can just write down exactly what God puts in your heart, and don't judge it, and just be a messenger. And if you want, you can go to her and talk to her, explain to her, and then ask her, ask Corinne, does this resonate with you? And she can say yes, she can say no. If you've got a no, not a big deal. We're going to have more opportunities where we can grow. Amen? Does this all make sense? Do we all understand what we're doing? Okay, I'm going to pray for Corinne. And while I'm praying, the Holy Spirit's going to talk to you guys, okay? Father God, I just pray right now. I pray blessing over us. I thank you for this time of learning and growing together. I pray for Corinne, God. I pray that you just bless her right now. I just pray that you give her words of encouragement, God, words that build her up and will bring her comfort in her life and in her situation, God. And I just pray, God, that we hear Bible verses, that we're going to be getting pictures, we're going to be getting words, we're going to get feelings. And I just pray, Lord, that that even we can feel your emotions, God, that we just connect you in whatever way we connect you, God, and that in faith we are going to write down on these cards boldness, and even and maybe you're telling some people to go speak to her directly, God. And so I just pray right now that uh, you just begin to speak, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, speak. I just activate the gift of prophecy over every person in this room right now in the name of Jesus, that they will no longer be the same, that they will begin to hear your voice like they've never heard before, and they will identify and know your voice and your voice alone. So we just come again. We plead the blood of Jesus right now. I pray that they will not hear any other voice. We bind up any other kind of demonic distraction or, or voice, God. And I just pray the enemy is just silenced and that we know that it is you, God. And I just pray that you will continually speak to your people for the blessing, comfort, and edification of what you have. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you're still writing or still listening, take a moment and do that. But we just thank, I just thank you for coming to this class. We're going to have class next week. It'll be 930. Get here early so we can have everything ready to go. And I'm just so glad uh, you all were able to come. And feel free to talk to me. I want to hear feedback from you guys and your experiences. Yes, thank you guys. <laughs>